Hey everyone, this is an intro to my intro for a series I'm about to start. I, I put on the same shirt so it wouldn't be as jarring. Um, I filmed this video way back in January and uh, yeah, it's to be the intro for my birth control series. I just think it's valuable. I don't want to refilm all of that. I'm going to put scripture and reasons why I believe what I believe and what the Bible says about um, birth control and families and um, how we should deal with that as single women. That'll all be a different video. So this one's kind of going to feel out of place until I finish the series, um, which won't be till later because I'm still uploading all the ones I filmed the past few months. I am probably most excited about this series of all the ones I've come up with, just because this is something that's really close to my heart and I think is really valuable information. Um, but yeah, this video that you're about to watch is just the intro and it's all biologically, it's like the biological basis. Um, I'm explaining so that when I use terms in the other video, if there's confusion, you can go back to the biological video and be like, oh, that's what that means. Or I basically explain how a uterus works. So that's why it's a little jarring. So just go into this one prepared knowing that. I hope you enjoy the video. Today I would love to talk about birth control and um, why I don't think <laughs> there's... <laughs> I'm about to change. No, I'm gonna keep going. I'm just gonna do this all the time. Why I don't think there's any form of birth control that is okay. Um, why, it, well, so I'm gonna walk through the different types of birth control. I'm gonna walk through the most extreme and why they are evil and an affront to God. And I'm gonna walk through the you know smallest form of you know withdrawal and um, things like douching and condoms and, and things that are you know don't affect hormones or anything like that. I'm also gonna walk through um, specifically the pill. Um, not Plan B. Well, I might talk about Plan B, but anyways, I'm gonna talk about everything. So this first episode I thought would be like the more informative side for women who know a little bit less about how the body works, a little bit less about how our uteruses work. To start with, how does ovulation happen? How does the body work in terms of reproduction? The most vital organ in sex, which a lot of people will tell you, um, I don't know if it's true, that's kind of a subjective thing, I'm just gonna talk about facts. A very important organ in sex is your brain. So, um, in specifically in women in ovulation, you have your hypothalamus and it's attached to your pituitary gland, which is like this little guy in your brain. <laughs> it's, I don't have diagrams or pictures. Uh, so this is what you get. So your hypothalamus tells uh, your pituitary gland to send out messenger signals. It tells it by way of like neurochemical messages. I, I don't know the exact science behind that, but so your hypothalamus tells your pituitary, hey, it's time. And then your pituitary gland is like, awesome, cool. I'm going to send out some other stuff to the body. They send out two hormones. You have the FSH and the LH. So the FSH is the follicle. I can never say it. The FSH is the follicle stimulating hormone. And the LH is the luteinizing hormone. So the, I like to use the terms, um, what I'm gonna use just for this for funny things. The FSH, the follicle stimulating hormone, um, is like the friendly hormone. So, and, and the luteinizing is like the loser hormone. So we're gonna call them friendly and loser. That's just because they're both vital and we love them both. They're like your two friends, the one that you always wanna hang out with and the one that you're like, I want small doses of you. I need you, but not all the time. Uh, that's the loser, that's the luteinizing hormone. <laughs> Okay, bad example. Anyway, the FSH, the friendly one, is the one that basically produces estrogen. It makes us feminine. It makes us what we were supposed to be. Um, not that the LH makes us something that we're not supposed to be. Not at all. Um, so that the FSH basically um, makes estrogen and estrogen makes us feminine. Femininity makes us love our men and be submissive and sweet and kind to him. And it makes us soft and... Um, I mean, estrogen is what gives us breasts and hips and a high voice and soft skin and a soft face and I can't think of anything else, but uh, right now, um, so that makes us soft and it makes us sweet. It also makes us horny, so it makes us, um, love our man in sexual ways and it makes us, uh, all that stuff. And then the luteinizing hormone, the LH produces progesterone and that makes us usually 
bloated for some women, crampy for some women, um, like tired. A lot of times you just want to sleep all day or it makes you PMS. It makes you hostile, um, like just mean to him. Now real fast to address something. No one can make you sin. So I'm not saying that like, and by no one, I, I mean nothing. Only you can make yourself sin, but we do have these hormones because we all have flesh. And because of the fall, we have these things, these hormones that probably, I don't know how they worked before the fall, but they were perfect. They were, they were made perfectly and gave us the perfect thing. So the progesterone gets your body, it basically releases the egg to drop. And so it gets your uterine lining ready and, and all that good stuff. So it probably did that all that perfectly and non-painfully and without all the bad side effects that sin brought in. So um, it's totally on us that, that your sin, if you lash out at your man or you're unkind, it's harder to fight through it for sure. There's hormones that were cranky at that time. But yeah, it's not, I'm not like using any of this to, to make an excuse of, oh, it's the hormone that makes you bad. So you can just blame it all on that and move on. Don't have to repent. Not at all. That's not true. That's Satan <laughs> trying to trying to justify how ovulation and egg production works is basically you have all these eggs re um, that are not mature. The FSH, um, the estrogen one, makes the egg um, a follicle cyst, uh, like mature, ready to mature. And then it becomes an egg. And then you're like, yay, the egg's like, I'm ready. I'm a mature egg. And, um, the ones around it, the follicle cysts around it, give, um, like, let off estrogen to fill that one with more estrogen and, and um, help mature it even more. And then the progesterone comes in, the LH, and it's like, it's time to drop. And so then the egg drop. With all that, estrogen makes you ready for sex, basically. So the estrogen tells your body, it's like, hey husband's looking pretty cute over there, isn't he? And it's like, you know, it's like your wingman, you know? Like, hey, hey. And so basically it tells you, it tells you that you're ready for sex. It's also what makes sex pleasurable. Essentially, um, it lubricates your, your female parts and, and makes you ready for sex. So it's, um, a pleasurable. Back to the it's time part and all that good stuff. Um, so the estrogen has now made you ready for sex it's made it pleasurable it's also made your um mm, cervical fluid i think yeah cervical fluid like um ready for the the sperm so it'll like accept it it makes it friendlier um because usually it's uh well anyway we'll get to that part. lh takes over so that means progesterone comes in progesterone i can't say these words and that's why i wish i just had little nicknames but anyway progesterone um, makes it even better. It makes like this um, sugar-like substance, um, basically making it sweet for the fertilized egg, if if the egg were to be fertilized during that time. So that makes a good spot for the egg to want to plan on the endometrial lining that's been growing with all these hormones being released. And, and then the cycle goes on and on and on. One confusing part that's going to be relevant later on, the progesterone makes the uterine lining friendly but it makes your cervical fluid less favorable to sperm um, and that's important because it's basically like if the egg has already been fertilized there's no need to let more sperm in so it's it just goes with the timing of the ovulation and the cycle and all this stuff once a month why this is all important is that this is all what the pills we're going to talk about so when your pituitary senses that your fsh you, that, like you have enough estrogen okay let's stop the pituitary is like okay friendly hormone let's reel it in just a little bit you're being just a little too nice and they reel it in so they stop producing that estrogen and they stop producing um the fsh basically they don't it doesn't stop producing it's not just like no more estrogen for you but yeah it cuts off the fsh or it turns down the meter, the level. <laughs> Here's my little bit of an opinion as to why hormonal contraceptives are wrong. <laughs> so what the pill has to do 
to make hormonal contraceptives work is it has to unnaturally give your body estrogen so that your body won't send out the FSH to produce it so ovulation won't occur so you don't have a chance of getting pregnant. What'll happen with a lot of birth control, um, especially if it's like a progesterone based one, which I don't know how many there are of those. A lot of them are the combination ones where it gives you estrogen, uh, progesterone, progestin, and progesterone. But what happens, like, so progesterone just makes the uterine lining unfavorable for an egg to land. So what happens a lot of times is you've just created an unsafe environment for the already fertilized egg, the already human-made person egg. Blastocyst, whatever you want to call it, you've just made it a not comfy home. You haven't stopped the the fertilization. You haven't stopped the, the contra what's the word you haven't stopped the conception of the egg so the egg gets fertilized and it hasn't even attached to the wall yet that is still a person that's not less of a person just because it hasn't attached to the wall it doesn't have a home yet it's a little baby that's looking for a safe place to land to grow and develop and be safe and and you've just made the your its home inside of you un, unsuitable essentially. Why some people argue that this is okay is because birth control, why it's better than all these other ones, all these other methods that we could go on and on about. Birth control is better because birth control stops ovulation. It doesn't, it doesn't stop the sperm from coming in. It couldn't possibly be bad if your moral argument is that the seed shouldn't be spilled because it's not being spilled. A man could still ejaculate inside his wife. It's just the ovulation isn't happening so that it can never be fertilized, right? So that that throws that argument out, or safe there. The the problem with any of these is that what the pill does is it stops the FSH from telling the egg to mature, telling the egg that follicle to to yeah become a follicle cyst. Why the pill is wrong, essentially, after all of that science, what the pill does, the estrogen tells your pituitary gland not to really release FSH. So your pituitary gland doesn't give that FSH, doesn't let the egg mature. There's a chance that FSH is still released. And so it matures that egg into a follicle cyst, right? So now it's, it's able to work its magic, I guess. But then you're like, wait, then how does that not happen a lot more? How do, how does birth control not affect a lot more women? How does, um, how does birth control have like an almost 100%, a pretty much 100% way of working? If you use it 100% right, there's almost no way you can get pregnant. There just isn't. That's all true. How that happens and how that's possible is because the progesterone in it is making it so that the LH doesn't trigger it to be like ovulation to start. So that egg can be a mature egg. It just doesn't let it ovulate so it doesn't let it plant. Your estrogen level for your body, it's, it thinks that it's, it has a lot, but it's actually really low, so the endometrial tissue isn't good for the egg, so it's not gonna fertilize. And alongside that, the progesterone has made the cervical mucus fluid, I, I don't know, it's less favorable to even want sperm it makes it thicker and so it's harder for the sperm to like go in. I'm gonna name some side effects that I've heard from the pill um, and then I'm gonna read some off that I didn't know about so side effects we know about um, mood swings so hormones obviously you're messing with them mood swings irritability things like that um, one of the saddest ones I think is the uh, the non-desirability that's not real the lack of sex drive you have toward your husband the lack of empathy and kindness and sweetness because your body's not producing the estrogen that it normally would it's taking a pill to give it estrogen and it's not the normal amount or else you ovulate so it's telling it's like fake estrogen that's not allowing the fsh to come alongside and so it's it makes you irritable to, to him and we already struggle with that we already struggle with submission that's already a woman's a great burden that's already the the curse of the fall why 
why make it harder? I know that it makes sex harder because it changes fluids and stuff, so it makes it not as it makes it dry down there and I've, I've heard that that's affected a lot of women in their sex life and but they'd rather that than have a terrible sex life than a child because children are such a huge burden right um i know it i've heard because of the, the what it does to blood clotting and, and stuff in in veins and stuff with blood lipids that apparently uh, there's a huge risk of headaches um that a lot of women on it have headaches. And that's something I hear like a million women complain about every day all the time. And I'm always wondering if either everyone around me is on the pill or if that's something that's common to women that they just always have headaches. A lot of women gain weight. I'm just gonna read off this thing I printed out. Um, there's unpredictable spotting. Oh yeah, it increases the risk of problems with blood lipids. Um, so that is significant in heart disease. So um, it'll be low density lipoprotein lipoprotein i just said lipoprotein <laughs> like i said pms worse sex worse aches and pains worse and yeah you can go on and on all day about how convenient it is and and reliable it is and how it changed your acne and helped you become regular and in the end those things are not worth changing who god made you to be god didn't make you to be this awful sinner who is is irregular and and has headaches and acne but the fall did and we have to deal with the curse in ways that are moral still we can't just make them go away on top of that there's um a pill that's they're called pops this is something i found out recently um it's progesterone only pills and they're for women who like can't deal with the estrogen that it's too much the hormonal changes make them break out more or gain so much weight and or the estrogen makes i don't know it's bad for them to have the extra estrogen or whatever so they do progesterone only pills the problem with those are they have an abortifacient effect they don't stop ovulation because progesterone like we talked about earlier only stops the lh hormone the the egg is still can still be fertilized it just can't find a suitable nesting ground the uterine lining it makes it softer and thinner or not softer thinner and weaker and so it has no place to plant and you ovulate and you let this baby become fertilized and then the progesterone is like mm, sorry you're gonna have to go but no one can say for certain yet the science isn't like 100% on those because you'd have to have so many women on the progesterone only pills and then also get them pregnant which is immoral and then see if it kills the baby um so basically it's like telling pregnant women to drink alcohol so we could see what happens to babies um not the exact same I'm aware don't 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 but apparently the ovulation rate is up to like eight or nine times higher with the POP so don't take those those are clearly immoral. If if I can't convince you on birth control and I can't convince you that it's wrong to manipulate your hormones and, and what God gave you to make you a woman, the literal thing that distinguishes you from a man, if I can't convince you on that, at least listen to me and don't take progesterone only pills. Please. It's wrong. It's unnatural. It affects your hormones in a way that you already have to deal with those hormones. Don't make it hard on yourself. The pill has a history. The reason why it was created is just wrong and unnatural. And so much about it, it's just like that fine line where it's like, what side do you want to be on? So it's like, you have two decisions and you're like, not sure one is moral and you're 100% sure this one's moral. Do you risk this one? No, 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 you don't. Why would you risk it? Why would you not be on the safer side? let's say breakthrough ovulation happens which can happen in the pill one of the biggest problems with the pill we don't know how often breakthrough ovulation can happen because the baby would be in such an early stage of life a lot of times when women get their periods they can actually be miscarrying and that's wow that's so wrong ovulation can still have it can be fertilized and let's say that conception does happen we don't know the rate that it is abortifacient the third way that the pill prevents pregnancy is the thinning of the uterine lining which is abortifacient it just objectively is you can let a baby fertilize let ovulation happen let conception happen and the baby can't plant itself to the wall like i said it's basically making it so your baby 
almost gets her it's so close it's about to live and grow it just has to attach to the to the wall and it can't because you've weakened it and thinned it out so much and made it unfriendly in an unsafe unsatisfactory environment for the baby that it it just dies that nothing happens it can't live it can't grow it died it's so obvious too when you think about it the lighter period that results from the birth control pill means your uterine lining is lighter weaker it, it's like how are people debating this how are christians specifically how are christians still debating debating that this is not a board of patient quick note i think i keep forgetting to mention through the video um what i mean by you can ovulate and the baby can um the baby can you know conception happens it just can't get to the uterine wall that's through the fallopian tube that's what i'm talking about so when it, it travels through the fallopian tube and then it, when it reaches the uterine wall that's where it can't plant i i don't think i ever used the term fallopian tube so far so embryo or blastocyst whatever you want to call it something with over a hundred cells of life has now been formed is about to be a baby given a few months would be a full-sized baby given a few weeks would have a heartbeat a brain fingers toes while it's traveling it's taking all that time and it just has nowhere to go it is a life it is growing it's what do you call something that is growing has cells needs nutrients and a safe place to live a life you call it alive it is alive. its main function is to prevent ovulation after that it's to prevent the triggering sorry it's to prevent the egg from maturing and then after that it's to prevent the ovulation with the egg being released but its third function it does function to make it an unsafe place for the baby to land it's abortifacient it has to be because if there's even a chance that there's a breakthrough say say you just took it wrong for one day and somehow the pill doesn't get enough and the baby you know can somehow be conceived and then it makes its way to the uterine wall and, and you've taken the pill since or or you've taken it before and so the uterine wall isn't safe for it you have made a hostile environment and you have murdered your child brothers and sisters and i say brothers because i know there could be men watching and that are that you know are asking these questions with their wives or considering for their future wife or their sisters or their mothers brothers and sisters is it worth the risk that you could kill your baby I'm going to give a scenario and I, I want you to listen and, and just truly think in your heart about the scenario. Let's say you are husband and wife and you just, you just really are in a financial rut right now. That's everyone's excuse. So let's use that. You're in a financial rut. You really can't afford to bring a baby. Babies are just the most expensive thing in the whole world. Someone comes along to you and says, okay, I can promise that you will never get pregnant until you want. Totally when you want, you would just tell me. Tell me and you'll get pregnant the next day. You're like, wow, this is a sweet deal. What do we have to do? And they're like, you have to go into this dark room. It's like as big as a football stadium, but the lights are out pitch black and you have to shoot a gun. Okay. And there's like two kids in this whole room, but they're always really down low. So as long as you shoot it up high or shoot it like out, you know, they could be right in front of you. They could be far out, but they're, they're down on the ground. They're little kids. We'll tell you where they are. All these things. We have all this. We can show you all, all the reasons why you won't kill them. But they're, they're far out. Or, or you can shoot far out. Would you do it? There's like a less than 1% chance. Like literally thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of women and you know, do this every year, just once a year is all that you have to do it. They walk in, they do it. And like two people ever, ever in hundreds of thousands have even hit the kids, let alone kill them. And that's from a bullet ricocheting off the wall or the ceiling. It's not, you, you can't even, you're not going to hit them. I, I'm telling you, you're just not. The chances are so low. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? It's not. And you know why it's not? Because as Christians, we strive to do the more moral thing. Now you could say, oh, do the benefits outweigh the risks? I drive my car to work. I could be killed at any second. There's a, there's a less than 1% chance I'll be killed, but I might as well not drive my car because it's suicide. That's different and you know it because as Christians, we try to make the most moral choice. There isn't there isn't really a risk of us being hit aside from us doing something stupid or someone else doing something stupid. 
This you are knowingly doing something stupid. If you're knowingly driving to work every day blindfolded, yeah, you're sinning. But you don't do that because you're not an idiot. You don't go and take a risk of shooting a child, even if it'll ricochet and maybe it won't even kill them. It'll hit their leg and they just have to get surgery and they'll be fine. You don't take that risk because it's not worth it. And why is it not worth it to you? Because you value them as a human life. So what I would urge you to consider is that you don't actually treat that baby, those eggs, even when they're just newly fertilized as a life. I, I don't think you truly can treat them as a life. If you don't get indignant over these issues, if you don't truly think about the morality and the science, if you know the morality and science of the birth control pill. If you don't, now you do and you have no more excuse. And if you really don't and somehow you haven't seen this video or anything, you don't know any of it, you don't take it then because you don't know. As Christians, we do the thing that is right. We don't, we don't mess around with risks. We don't, we don't try to ride, up, ride a line. It's like the good's over here and the bad's over here. We don't like come this way to be close to the line so we can still do it. You stay as far as you can on this side. Stay as far as you can because we're supposed to be holy and set apart. Be set apart from that line. Every woman in the world takes birth control because they hate kids. From the science I've given and from the videos to come, I hope that you will see that birth control, the pill, is not a viable option for Christian women, Christian couples, ever. As a single, as a married woman, as a widow, as someone who's somehow old enough or, or you can't have kids, you literally don't have a uterus and but somehow need the pill for your acne, it's not okay because the morality of the situation and the chance that God always grants miracles, he can make you pregnant on that pill. Do you wanna be working against his plan so fervently or do you just wanna rely on him and, and pray and trust that he knows you and he knows your heart and he knows your situation? Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of this series. Right before I could finish filming that, my phone died so now I have to have it charged, but I really wanna say this before I go. James 1 tells us that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom, of whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. So just remember that children are a gift and every good and perfect gift is from the Father. And we should not take that lightly. We should not take that he says children are a gift and children are a blessing over and over in his word. And we should not take lightly how, how Jesus treated the little children. I think we see the value of life in God's nature and God's character. And I think it is vital that we as Christians emulate that in every every aspect of our lives. And in just the way that birth control is of hating our fertility, essentially hating that we could create a life. Uh, because that's what it is. You're 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 trying to stop it because you hate it. You don't want it. Maybe you don't hate it forever. You want it later, but you currently hate it. It is burdening you in some way that you feel like you have to stop it and you have to misdirect your natural hormonal ways to put off what, what God has for so many. That's it. Thanks for listening. Uh, see you next time, chickens. And I promise I will, I'll either... Um, so this or I'll wear not hold shirt. It's so weird because I wore this to work today. So how embarrassing. I'm just, just a homo, I guess. Bye guys.